in the intro. This is a real interesting one, or at least I think it is anyway, and I can't wait to get and start hitting some of these balls this morning. I've managed to get my hands on a set of ping irons that are 40 years old. Yes, 40 years old. A little bit of refurb gone off, new shafting, re-gripped. I'm gripping this thing, by the way, look at that. Plenty of close-ups, get that in focus. That is stainless steel cash club made by Ping, first introduced in 1978. The Carston One uh, is the set of irons. Um, one of the very, very much a leader, as we all know, in terms of uh, club head iron design in particular. The Ping I2 is a massive, massive seller worldwide, as we're all aware. These were perimeter weighted cavity back irons from 1978. I know, it sounds mad. Have a look at some of these close-ups that I'm throwing up on screen now. Little difference in the shape to what we see now. Little sharp around the edges, certainly at the toe, the, the, the height of the toe you can see there leads to a very sort of pointy leading edge, very narrow in terms of height down by the heel area. Um, and the actual underneath the club again is fairly wide sole, I suppose, um, but still narrow top line, but you'd explain this or describe this rather as a very, very compact head. Lofts are interesting on these and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put them up against probably what Ping would claim, I suppose, their most recent release, the i500. Totally different, a hollow head design, very much all about what technology Ping has introduced into golf clubs right now in 2018. So let's see the differences between the two. So that's the head to head I'm gonna do. But yeah, if I throw up on screen now, you'll just see the differences in the lofts. Because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit a seven iron, I'm gonna hit a five iron, and we'll see what the differences are in terms of performance wise. But here's the differences in the lofts, first of all. So as you can see, the more traditional lofts are 35 degrees seven iron, um, 26 degrees in the five iron, and we've got 24 degrees on the I-500 and 30.5 in the I-500 on the seven iron. Quite a bit of difference in terms of uh, loft, but the things we're gonna see, or the things I'm interested in is average golfer, as we all know. Can I hit these things first of all? Because they look incredibly small and by the, by, the, by the modern day, how we look and perceive clubs, it's, uh, they're not confidence inspiring because like I said, they're so small sat behind the ball. But what happens when you strike the ball well and hopefully throw a few bad ones in there as well, no doubt, as you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, hit across the club face, no doubt. And I'd be interested to see how these things perform when you don't hit the middle of the face as well. So. No more talking because I can't wait to get stuck in. So let's move the camera and get hitting some golf balls. Right, we're going to start proceedings off with the seven iron of the Carston One. I don't know what the name of the set is. The Carston One is what I can read on the back. It's the seven iron. I'll move into the five iron shortly. But like I said, our address, you can see from 35 degrees aloft, it's got plenty of club face that you see sat behind the ball. Um, the club face in terms of uh, sits a little bit back from the hustle. I like the way it frames the golf ball. I remember the Ping I2 irons did a very similar thing indeed. And like I said, it's an unusual look, that high um, toe end, if you like, just really sticks up. But at the shallow end of the club near the heel, it is very, very narrow indeed. But enough talk. We're coming off to a better start. Right on the line. I've got to say, uh, it's not a forged club, obviously. This, this is a cast cavity, stainless steel. The feel out of that was surprising. Um, I'm assuming I got that one out of the middle of the club because of the way that felt. So I'll hit a few more with this. And uh, I've got to say, I've got a big smile on my face. I'm enjoying this this morning. I can't wait to hit some more golf balls. Hit some more with this seven iron. Move into the five iron of this, and then I'll have a quick break, and I'll talk about the difference between the two when we look at uh, the i500 in both those two clubs as well. <laughs> So let's 
Just before I go into hitting the i500, which I've done quite a bit over the last couple of weeks in both the individual testing and a little bit of a head-to-head -head with the P790s, um, let's look at the differences between the two when they're sat alongside one another. So don't forget, these are both the seven irons. You can visibly see the change in loft. There's five degrees difference in terms of loft, and they do look like two different clubs. Uh, one looks almost like eight, nine iron, as it would suggest with the difference in loft compared to the other sat uh, down at address. Um, very much a thicker top line, very much more, uh, it's this chrome finish as opposed to the dull finish that was on the Karsten irons. Um, oddly enough, and like I said, it's a very personal thing, I like the way that the original ping iron sat at address, to be quite honest with you as well. Um, one looks, you can tell obviously there's a massive difference in one looks like a modern club and the other doesn't. It's as simple as that because of the head shape and design that we have gotten used to looking at. Um, but I have to say, for me, the unique look of the Carston one really sets it apart. And on the eye, I prefer the older club. But ultimately with these clubs we're expecting to see huge differences in performance. Don't forget this is 40 years of technology now that it's packed into the i500. All the changes that have been made, this is, don't forget, there's a hollow head design. It's a forged face on this club. Um, it's strong aloft. So we're expected to see big gains in distance, big gains in consistency. And what you'd naturally expect is that the sweet spot on the i500 will be where the difference is, really. I think the difference between the two clubs when you hit out the middle, or with all clubs in general, not massively different. It's when you're in and around um, the heel and toe of the club face. Once again, off to a good start, which uh, in terms of strike, I'd rather be hitting a few balls in and around the club face. I'm sure I will do that. Maybe not with the seven, but certainly when we get into the five iron, I'm sure I'll find plenty of that club face. To see the difference, like I said, when the weaker shots come in, what happens, uh, and I say weaker, when the poor strikes from the average golfer come in, what happens to the ball in terms of overall performance then? That's gonna be the interesting difference. Um, but yeah, Interesting to see what happens in the end of all this. So uh, I'll carry on with this seven iron and then into the five iron on the i500 and then we'll sit down, discuss numbers and I'll tell you my overall thoughts. the office a little bit of time to look through the numbers and not a great deal of numbers to look through that is because it was fairly limited shots that I hit this morning with both clubs but I've got to say I really enjoyed doing the video the thing that stood out for me a mile was um, something that I'm going to pick up on the next video because I also tested uh, would you believe a, a one iron um, from ping as well from the same sort of period I really wished that ping would have kept this iconic design um, to the current day now I assume that changes were made because of um, well they were just a change in aesthetics because of the, what we got used to seeing in terms of a golf club whether it was to do with aerodynamics or to do with like I said improved performance I don't know but the one thing that I noticed was that looking at the club you just you know that it's a ping iron that's not the same to be said as the current day and I just wish like I said they'd have kept some form of that iconic design which they did through the 80s and early 90s but then things started to change and everything now sits on the shelf looking pretty similar so it's a shame that they didn't carry on with that design but there you go I'm sure there was reason and logic for it. I think I'm going to throw the numbers up straight away and uh, we'll have a look. There's no great secrets in here but please wait until the end because I think there's a very valid point to be made out of some of this uh, data that we've got as limited as it is and I'll get to it at the end of all this so we'll go through first of all if I throw the numbers up for the two comparative seven irons that I hit if 
for some reason I hit one more shot, I was only doing groups of three, um, which like I said is very limited, but here's what happened with the, uh, with the seven iron. So, very, very quickly, um, 151 carry as opposed to 134 carry, 94 peak height, 105 peak height, 62 spin as opposed to 68 spin, and a ball speed of 111 as opposed to a ball speed of 103. Now, what you've got to remember here straight away is that there's a loft, a strong loft of 30 degrees on the seven iron as opposed to 35 degrees loft. So in terms of the extra distance, pretty much exactly as you would expect. No surprises there. And the increased ball speed, once again, no surprises. And I think we can purely put that down. So if we look at nothing else at this stage, purely put that down to the difference in loft between the two irons. So once again, hit the five iron, minimal shots, but here's the data that we got for the five irons. So again, 172 carry as opposed to 156, 80 peak height as opposed to 98 peak height, spinning very similar, 5,000 as opposed to 5.1. Huge difference in ball speed here at 120 ball speed on the five iron on the i500 and 111 on the cast and one. And there wasn't such a vast difference in the change of lofts here. So in the longer irons, we started to see probably better performance, not directly related to loft. So there's arguably different reasons as to why that five iron performed that much better than the old five iron. And you can look into great detail as to why that would be. My obvious assumption would be is down to the strike, the bigger sweet spot on the I-500 I think would be something that would come into play. There are definitely faster ball speeds off of the newer clubs across the club face. So there's a number of things that we could look at as potentially why. And I'm gonna to get to my little analogy very, very shortly. So let's assume that the assessment, the, the, um, the evaluation of the period of time that what have I said 40 years or so that has, that has passed between these two clubs? What did I notice? Well, obviously, the biggest difference is the size of the sweet spot. Forgiveness, I suppose. Increased ball speeds, purely, I mean, the, just the size of the club face itself. I mean, there's just so much more club head to make contact with the ball with compared to that uh, very sleek and small design. I think. You've got to pay massive tribute, like I said, to the players of that era because their ball striking must have been far, far superior to what it is now when you consider, um, like I said, the size, the technology that's in clubs, the size of the club heads, when you go back to the size of drivers and all that's going on right now, then, like I said, all I can think back is, my God, these must have been some talented golfers who could play uh, around a golf such a skilled round of golf with an iron of this size. And I really enjoyed it in the ping. I really like the look of it. I love the iconic look. And if I'm honest with you, from a field perspective, and I pretty much hit the middle of the club uh, as well on these shots that, uh, that I got here, didn't really, um, and I, I did okay to be fair, which like I said, I've no doubt um, on a cold day, one thinned out the bottom and you'd certainly know about it back into the hands. But as it happened in this performance, it was quite good and the feel that I got I really enjoyed. If I'm honest with you, I prefer the sound out of the cast and ones than I did out of the Ping I 500s, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, but here's the interesting bit for me, the bit that sort of tells the biggest tale about where we're at in terms of technology right now. And I'm going to throw up the figures of the Ping cast and one five iron and the Ping I 500 seven iron. Okay, so here they are on the screen in front of you now. And I think this tells a massive tale. First of all, the difference in lofts in these two is the Karsten 1 5 iron is lofted at 26 degrees and the Ping i500 7 iron is 30 degrees. Okay, so four degrees difference in loft, but look at the performance. 156 carry, 151 carry, 98 peak height, 95 peak height, 51 spin, 62 spin, 111 ball speed identical. So what is it that those numbers tell us and why is it so, for me, it stands out a mile here as to 
really showing what the modern day technology does and what the difference is in modern day technology. Every time a club is released of late, they are very strong in terms of their loft. And that is often aimed as a criticism in terms of the comments. It's often aimed at manufacturers cheating on us, moving the goalposts. And I understand that logic and I think there's an element, definitely the ball is definitely going further when you strengthen the loft, that is not disputable. But I think what these two sets of figures show us that it's not just down to the increase in loft that increases better performance overall. Because what we've seen here is that there's four degrees worth of difference. Don't forget, we're talking about a set of clubs that has a massive time scale in between it. I acknowledge that. So we're looking at extreme cases here, but I think that's where it highlights. 26 degrees aloft, 30 degrees aloft in the modern day club is producing the same set of numbers as what you would expect to get in terms of performance from a club that was lofted at 26 degrees 30, 40 years ago. And what that says to me is there's a little bit more in the modern day club than just strengthening lofts. Yeah? I hope everyone gets that as, and it sets the same alarm bell ringing in your head that it does in mine. It tells a tale. Modern golf club technology is more than just about strengthening lofts in terms of their overall performance and I think that clearly shows the difference between the two clubs. From, like I said, a massive period, a massive gap 40 years time then you would expect some improvements to be made and like I said we're going into extremes here to highlight the point but I think that's what it does with those two sets of numbers that's a seven and a five iron compared not the same lofts they're not about two lofts being the same the new club is a lot weaker lofted than the five iron that we're referring to but performance is almost identical right have a think about that one I really enjoyed the test. It really, it did two things, looking at it in two ways, is that kind of like, my overall assessment would be, if you're on your game, if you're playing okay, these clubs still would be more than suitable for you to play a decent round of golf with, more than suitable. The da downer is, and the difference is, is that in the modern day course, not downer, it's, it's reality. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the way clubs have evolved that you get away with a lot more, I think, with the modern day set of iron. And I think that's the big thing. The big thing that's changed is the sweet spot. The big thing that's changed is the level of forgiveness that we now get from the modern day club. Um, stronger lofts, yes, but still maintaining the same launch angles, same spin numbers. And I think that's the kind of how technology has evolved. I won't go on anymore anyway I think uh, I've said quite enough and I hope I got it to make sense because I was struggling there for a bit but anyway uh, as ever thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it I'm going to post a video um, probably in the next three or four days which will be me attempting to hit a ping this is from the Carsten 3 range of irons again from a similar period it's going to be a one iron. Can the average golfer get one out the middle would be great and uh, record some performance that's going to be an interesting one and that's going to be up against uh, we're going to throw in a little bit of a ping crossover again at uh, the modern day version of a driving iron i suppose from ping and see how that compares anyway i'll keep waffling on i'll see you soon thanks for watching thumbs up comments down below and subscribe if you don't already